Um, I'm going to talk to you about two things. First of all, the, the experiment which kind of Peter alluded to about uh, opening or uh, reaching out to, 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 to bloggers in the community at large. Um, and also I'm going to contribute my own views on this topic, um, on the report actually. So, so essentially what I'm going to talk about, I'm focus, going to focus on convergence. So I'm going to talk about technology, convergence and collaboration. Now, alternatively, I could call this topic as ants versus the wildebeest, and you'll see, you'll see why. Um, the end of the report first, it essentially asks the question that will the digital technologies and mass tools of mass collaboration cause us to come closer, or will they cause us to go apart, i.e., will we have a coherent ecosystem, or will we have small fragments uh, which work separately? And the secondary question which the report also asks is what policies do we need to implement now to, to, to acquire leadership? I think if we take a step back, we have to understand that technology raises some fundamental questions about the way the society and economics work. Basically, the internet transforms us from a hierarchy to a network. And the network model is pervasive. It's not something new. The brain works like that, neurons work like that, and colonies work like that, and so on and so forth. Networks scale globally. We are seeing that already but they also have critical hubs. So you take out a hub and you, you basically break up the network. Um, then the question to us is that if there are six degrees of separation between all of us, then what are those six links? How can we uh, leverage those six links? And the answer perhaps is that in a, in a paradigm like this, the, the collaboration model is more like the ant colony. In other words, that it is more of local interactions which are, which, are, which are complete in themselves and they manifest themselves globally. So this is the kind of collaboration, this is why the word collaboration is so important in the report, in my view, because what we call it Web 2.0, we can call it something else, but essentially it is localized collaboration which leads us to something more. And intelligence shifts to the network, to the edge, it means people are being empowered. The, the, at the edge of the network are people, and this is the, 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 the key message here. Um, when people are empowered, either you can have a tragedy of commons. The tragedy of commons is when uh, a, a resource is given to people and people utilize it in their own ways and, and, and it fragments. Or you can have something, uh, a wonderful cathedral being built by, by simple efforts from people. And there is a final, uh, there's a study which was conducted which said why certain societies, certain groups of animals did well, like wolves, geese, uh, ants, and why not wildebeest? Wildebeest is animals which basically follow a uh, track back and forth. And the idea is that these animals which have succeeded, they have collaborated very well locally, and they have also used that local collaboration to make it global. And that perhaps is the lesson for us, that collaboration is the paradigm. Now I come to technology. And I think technology is good at connecting, but connecting is not collaboration. Connections are not collaboration. There is a secondary step to that. And if we think about, there was an article in the New York Times which, which compared Japan, of all the countries, to the Galapagos Islands uh, in, in terms of the mobile development. And the idea was that the Japanese mobile development was so close, so insular, that it became like Galapagos Islands. So you, you could conduct experiments on it, but, but outside that it, it didn't scale. And that is what we should avoid. In other words, we should be, be more open, we should be more inclusive of, of everything. Convergence is here. We are going from the Internet of Computers to the Internet of People, that is Web 2.0, to now the Internet of Things. Uh, this convergence will talk many languages. It could be uh, open source, it could be Twitter, it could be private clouds, it could be Skype, it could be LTE, so on and so forth. Um, and if I have to say what are the key technologies I look at today, uh, they are LTE, which, we, which they should focus on, WebOS, uh, the European Cloud perhaps, Smart Grids, big initiatives in the US, certainly we, uh, perhaps more here, and M-Commerce. And when I look at, when I conclude with M-Commerce, I think there is an initiative called M-Pesa in Kenya, which has 6.5 million subscribers and two million daily transactions in Kenya of all the countries. So while we talk of India, China, and countries like that, let us not forget that places in Africa which, which are uh, showing some tremendous innovation, uh, and, and that, that is something which, which is uh, for the policymakers to decide how we can in, in empower uh, us as well. And the conclusion of my report is, a basic conclusion of my thinking is basically that we are living in a Cambrian explosion. A Cambrian explosion is a, is a specific time in the, in the ecosystem when there was a lot of oxygen and there was a lot of diversity of organisms all over the world. Uh, this was just before the dinosaurs. 
um, and that explosion will cause a lot of shift and we're already seeing that. Um, we are going from mass to niche um, and that niche could mean anything. The internet basically allows us to small form small niches, whether we call them carpools uh, or we call something called cloud, couch surfing, uh, which apparently is something where you can go and, and, and sleep in somebody else's couch in, in their home uh, as, as a kind of a holiday thing. And this kind of mechanism is possible, collaboration is possible through the, through the Internet. It is a business model which did not exist and could not have existed had we not had the connections for, for young travelers to go anywhere in, a, in a, another country and say, that, hey, have you got a spare couch? I can, I can sleep on that and, and, and off I go. My, that concludes my observations about the report. And just a quick thought about the Policy Bloggers Network, which, which Peter, Peter alluded to. This was an experiment even for me. I have been a blogger for, for many years. Uh, I have never done this before. And I, I don't think from the experiments we have been putting out to people, nobody else has done as well. So I think a lot of people are watching this. And we decided to take a very simple approach, just contact people and, and, and uh, try to liaise with them and understand what it is. Um, send out some information. We, we, I, I, I partnered with a few people, David Ostimo from Europe, uh, Steve Ressler, who runs an uh, organization called GovLoop in the U.S., uh, Andrew Kermazik also in the U.S. So there were four of us which I tried to create a transatlantic collaboration, and then from then onwards we, we tried to open it up to more bloggers. We emailed about 100 people, uh, about 40 responded, um, 10 actually gave us very detailed responses without seeing the report, and the report now goes out to them. Uh, I think we will have a network of over 50 policy bloggers to start with, mainly spanning Europe and USA. I think we should, uh, we will extend this further more, and it, it is an experiment, and I would, uh, I would like to work with you if, if you have any thoughts uh, and, and how we can work on this, uh, because it, it's a network. It will evolve, not by our initiatives, but it will evolve as, uh, as the people take it. Uh, thank you very much. That's it. Yeah.